Today, the kingfish and his wife, Sapphire, decided to take a stroll through the park. And at the moment, we find them walking along one of the paths, enjoying the beauties of Mother Nature. Ain't it wonderful walking in the park together, Joyce? No. Say, just look at that romantic young fellow over there on the bench with his girlfriend. No, she's pretty all right, ain't she? Look, he's got his arm around and he's kissing her. Joyce, just looking at that, don't it make you want to do the same thing? I'll say it, but if I do, the fellow liable to punch me in the nose. Joyce! (laughs) I'm talking about us. Oh, oh. You know, you ain't never been romantic in your whole life. Oh, what is you talking about? I remember when we took our honeymoon up Niagara Falls. There was a park up there, and we had our own special bench on Lover's Land. We practically lived there. We did live there. You was too cheap to get a hotel room. <laughs> well, let's not argue, honey. Come on, let's get on home. My feet is getting cold. The newspaper in the bottom of my shoes sopping up the water here. My feet getting wet and everything. <laughs> George, you ought to complain, because walking in the park is the only entertainment I ever get. You never have no money to do nothing, like taking me to dinner or to the movies or nothing else. Oh, there you go, hopping about money again. I'm serious, George. All right, all right. Now, listen, honey. You really want to go out to dinner tonight? Sure. Okay, if that's what you want, me and you will have dinner out tonight. Oh, George, that's wonderful. Call up your sister over in Brooklyn and tell her to expect us. <laughs> Like I say, Henry, me and Sapphire had a nice day in the park yesterday up to the time she started hollering at me about money. Married life ain't all sailing good, you know. Yes, well, it's the same way at my house, Kingfish. As a matter of fact, the only man I know whose married life is at all serene is our friend Amos. Yeah, you're right. By the way, Henry, did you have news about Amos and Ruby? Oh, yes, I did, Kingfish. Sometime in the next few weeks, they expect another blessed adventure. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> I heard about that. Well, you know, Henry, Sapphire really been jumping on me. I sure wish I knew where I could get some money. Well, you know, Andy got a very lucky financial break the other day. An uncle of his gave him an old 1877 nickel. It's got a big five on the front of it with a shield on the back of it. Hmm, 1877 nickel. I don't think I ever seen one like that. Well, it's a very rare coin. Andy took it down to a dealer. He said it was worth $250. Well, anyway, Andy's decided to keep it as an ace in the hole in case he ever needs any money. Two hundred and fifty dollars. Uh, I just thinking Andy might lose that coin out of his pocket. As his dear friend, maybe I ought to get it away from him and sell it. Of course, uh, him being the owner, I'd give him his legitimate cut of fifty percent of the thing, you know. Uh, yes, yes. Sir. Well, I don't know. It ain't going to be easy getting it away from him. And he keeps the coin in a little purse in his pants pocket. He does, huh? Well, in that case, I gotta think of some way to get a hold of Andy's pants. Well, that oughtn't to be so hard for you, Kingfish. After all, it, uh, you took the shirt off his back many times. It's only a short jump to his pants. Yeah, yeah. Well, the only way I can figure to get Andy's pants off so I can get that coin is by telling him I don't open up a physical culture school. And I get him to sign up for the course. Oh, I hear his feet clapping down the hall now. Well, hi there, Kingfish. How's it? Uh, come in, Andy. Come in. Say, what is that sign you got on the door there? George Stevens Physical Culture School. Oh, uh, didn't you know, Andy? I was back in my old profession. Wait a minute, Kingfish. Where did you ever learn anything about physical culture? Oh, where did I learn? At the famous United States Physical Culture Institute. Where's that? Uh, Muscle Shoals. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm doing great, uh, too, Andy. Uh, just look at that picture there on the wall of one of my star pupils there. Oh, yeah. He got quite a physique, all right, ain't he? Yeah. Well, then, uh, one week ago, that fellow walked in here. He was an 86-pound weakling. He was that skinny? Skinny. Well, I gave him a pair of gym trunks. They had to hold him up with scotch tape. <laughs> Couldn't get a grip on nothing around his way. Yeah, you you mean he was that way one week ago? Yeah, that's right. And look at them muscles he got there now. He got biceps, triceps, fullceps. He got seps all over his body. Look at him. <laughs> Yeah, he's show stepped up all right. Yeah. Well, I guess that physical culture stuff was all right for them skinny guys, but a big husky fellow like me don't need none of that. Yeah, well, now I wouldn't be too sure, brother. Now, let's see what kind of shape you're in. Yeah. Let me see you bend over there and, and, and touch your toes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> <clears throat> well, I made my kneecaps. Yeah. <laughs> uh, do that count for anything? Look here, brother. Now, let's face the back. The reason you can't touch your toes is because you is what they call in physical culture circles a corpulent specimen with an obese characteristics. What does that mean? 
A fat pig. <laughs> well, I guess I is getting on the flabby side. Uh, you think you can do anything for me, Kingfish? Yeah, well, I don't know, Anna. Uh, uh, let me see what I got to work with here. Let me get my tape measure here. Take a few measurements. Yeah. See how I stack up. Go okay, ahead. stand still, Anna. Let me get my tape measure around you here. Mm-hmm. Stomach, 56. Chest, 38. Shoulders, 18. <laughs> Head, 6. <laughs> Body got a nice taper to it, Diana. <laughs> you know, if you had a stem in the top of your head, you'd look just like an avocado. <laughs> you the closest thing I'd have seen to a pyramid in a long time, man. Yeah, well, if I was that bad, maybe I better get, uh, get in there and take one of them courses. Yeah, I'll say you better, Anna. Glad to have you as a pupil. Now, the main principle of physical culture is to tune up the nervous system rejuvenate the muscle tone, and show them the reflexes. Yeah, well, that sounds good. Now, what is the first thing I got to do? Take off your pants. <laughs> Take off my pants, huh? Is I supposed to put on anything else? Well, usually we hand out gym's uh, pants, you know, but you long underwear boys don't need them. <laughs> uh, that's it now, Ender. Now, just hand me your pants here. Yeah, here you is. Hey, that's quite an idea you got there, Ender. Keep the breezes off your legs. You done sewed your socks right to your long underwear, ain't you? <laughs> yeah. All right, now, Andy, now for the first exercise. Uh, turn around and face the wall. Okay. Now, I'm going to give you some eye exercises while you strengthen the muscles of your eyelids. Mm-hmm. Yeah, now, when I count one, I want you to close your eyes. Then when I say two, well, you can open them again. Hmm. I never knowed you had to take off your pants to do eye exercises. <laughs> well, all right, now, Andy, let's begin. You ready? Yeah. All right, one. Uh, two. Well, I bet you feel a lot better now, don't you, Anna? Yeah, I guess so. What happens now? Well, now, we don't want to overdo it on the first day, so that'll be all of the supervised training. <laughs> uh, from now on, is what we call the free play period. Yeah. I go on out now. You can jump around here all you want. Just go ahead. Yeah, but where, Kingfish, ain't you going to have me do no lifting? Oh, you don't have to, Anna. I done done all the lifting that needs to be done. <laughs> Henry, what are you doing in the drugstore here? Why, I just dropped in for a cup of coffee, Kingfish. Uh, what about you? Oh, I, I got to make a telephone call here in the drugstore. Uh, uh, Henry, you was right. You know, I got that nickel away from Andy. And the dealer had already offered me $250 for it. I told you it was valuable, Kingfish. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm going to call the dealer now and tell him to. Uh, I'm going to take his offer. Yes, well, there's the phone booth right over there. Yeah, uh, pardon me, Henry. Oh, boy, this is really my lucky day. Holy mackerel, I done put Anders Nickel in the telephone. Listen to the sound of the terrier making that steam drill ring. Hey, terrier is a railroad man who can drill a rock like no man can. So drill ye terrier drill. Now every morning at 7 o'clock There were 20 carriers a working at the rock The boss comes along and he says Keep still and come down heavy on the cast iron drill And drill ye terriers drill Drill ye terriers drill Well, there's a work all day for a little bit of pay Down behind the old railway And drill ye terriers drill And blast and blast and fire The boss put a fine man down to the ground And he married a lady six feet around That woman could cook but you baked it as heavy as a bucket of lead. So drill the terriers, drill. Drill the terriers, drill. Well, there's a work all day for a little bit of pay. Down behind the old railway. And drill the terriers, drill. And blast, and blast, and fire. The foreman was a driving man. And by gosh, he was a flame mean man. Last week, a great big blast went on. Up in the air went Jim Jim Goff. So drill, drill ye terriers, drill. Drill ye terriers, drill. When the next payday came around, Jim Goff, a dollar short was found. When he asked what for, came this reply. You're gone for the time you was up in the sky. So drill, drill ye terriers, drill. All day for a little bitty pay. Drill ye terriers, drill. You know, 
know, people say to me, you're a quiet, unexcitable fellow, and I'm inclined to agree. I'll say this about myself, though. When it comes to Rinso, nobody possibly could be more enthusiastic than I am. That new Rinso with Solium does the most amazing thing I ever heard of. Why, even on rainy days, even if clothes must be dried indoors, Rinso with Solium puts sunshine in your wash. That's a fact. White clothes turn out not just whiter, but whiter than new. And washable colors not just brighter, but actually brighter than brand new. My wife is just as enthusiastic as I am because she sees those wonderful things happen in every Rinso watch. New Rinso, the Rinso you get at the store today, contains the scientific sunlight ingredient, Solium. Rinso is so safe for clothes and so easy on hands. My wife wouldn't think of using any soap except Rinso. And once you've tried it, I think you'll say so too. Today, more women use Rinso than any other wash day soap in the world. Only new Rinso contains solium. And now, back to Amos and Andy. Shorty, I come down here to the barber shop to see you, cause I was in trouble. I done put a rare nickel worth $250 in the phone booth at the drugstore, and I don't know what to do. Well, the thing, the thing to do is, uh, is very obvious. You, you gotta rush down and get the, uh, you, you gotta hurry and get a police, uh, you, you gotta marry, you, you gotta take, you get, you go, uh, that, uh, I, 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 there's your answer right there. <laughs> What a mess. To put a nickel that's worth a fortune in a telephone box, look, Shorty, mm. I got to figure some way to get that nickel back. Now, try and help me. You got brains? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think we should, you know, you, you could pry open the telephone box and, and, and get it out. Yeah, pry open the tele... Yeah, I guess that's the only way. Of course, you, you might get, get yourself into trouble that way, too, though. Yeah, well, uh, 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 there's going to be trouble. I, I better not get Andy in the... Uh... Yeah, I, I tell you what, I'll get Andy as a partner in the thing. Mm. Yeah, that's what I'll do. I'll get Andy. Yeah, I'll get Andy and I'll get him to open the box himself. Yeah, it was his nickel. He, he, he ought to help you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> See, I never would have put the nickel in there if, if I hadn't gotten excited and lost my head. Oh, so when, when you get excited, King Twitch, it's very easy to lose your head. I, I, I remember once I, 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 was, I, I was at a party once and we was roasting marshmallows and it was a cold night and we was all snuggled up to the fireside. And all of a sudden a gal come rushing into the room and, and she yelled, fire, fire, just like that. I'm, I'm, I'm ashamed to say, King Free, that everyone in the room kept calm except me. Oh, I lost my head completely. Yeah, well, why did you lose your head? I, 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 I was the one that was on fire. <laughs> Well, now, listen, Andy, calm down, will you, please? Amos, I as mad as a hornet. I done lost that rare nickel worth $250. Well, now, think hard, Andy. Uh, when did you last remember having the thing? Well, I remember I had it in my pants pocket when I walked into Kingfish's office this morning. Oh, yeah, the Kingfish, huh? Yeah, he sold me a physical culture course. And he told me to take my pants off. Uh, and your pants had the nickel in the pocket. Yeah. And the kingfish was nice enough to hold my pants for me so they wouldn't get dusty. Oh, yeah, yeah. Go on, go on. Well, he told me to close my eyes, to exercise the lids, and when I opened my eyes, he threw my pants at me, told me to keep jumping up and down the office, and then he left. Uh -huh. So I put on my pants and jumped up and down for a while, and then I left. Uh, and uh, there ain't nothing to it. Uh, can't you figure out what happened to you, Nickel? Oh, yeah. Now I know what done happened to that coin. Oh, you do, huh? Yeah, it fell out of my pocket while I was jumping up and down. <laughs> no, no, Andy, the kingfish took it out of your pants while you had your eyes shut. Oh, he wouldn't have done the he, he wouldn't, uh, uh, wait till I get my hands on him. I'm going to tear him apart. Yeah, well, you ain't going to have to wait long. Here you come down the hall now. I'm getting out here before the fireworks start. Goodbye, Andy. So long, Amos. Well, hi, kingfish. See you later. Kingfish, come in here. I'm going to bust you right in the head, you know that? Well, now, take it easy, Andy, take it easy. I know just what you're worried about. Well, why did you take that five-cent piece? Well, uh, to save you money. Uh, there's a law coming out next week, Andy, that, that you, you, you can't sell old coins no more. So I was going to uh, sell it for $250 before they pass the new law and give half the money to you. That's $125 more than you'd have had. Oh, well, why didn't you say that? Uh, well, did you sell it? Uh, well, now, Andy, that's what I'm going to explain to you. Now, first of all, me and you is in partners in this thing, so... 
If I get you $125 for your half, you'll sign a paper to that effect, won't you? Oh, Joe. All right, then I got some bad news for you. What's that? Your nickel is in the pay phone down at the drugstore. Now, how soon do you think that you can pry off the phone off the wall and get your nickel out? Well, I could pry that off the wall. Or I could pry, uh, uh, hold it, hold it, hold it a minute here. Yeah. <laughs> when can I do it? I is a noun, and that's wrong. You want to use the proverb, you. Yeah, well, that's what I say. When can you do it? Uh... Yeah, yeah, I guess you're right. Yeah, I know. It. <laughs> Ain't nothing to it there. Yeah. You is the illogical one to do the job, Andy. And you see, according to the law, you is the owner of the coin. And you got what is called in the legal terms prior rights. Oh, I is, huh? Yeah, so having prior rights is up to you to do the prying, you see. <laughs> you're right, you're right. Yeah, oh, 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 they got you there. Now, now, you, you just, uh, all you got to do, go in there and get the phone off the wall, open the thing up, take your old coin out, and replace it with another nickel. You ain't stealing nothing, you see. Yeah, well, that's the way these things work, okay. But suppose somebody catches me while I was in that phone booth there. Yeah, well, then, uh, you being the owner of the coin, uh, it's your legal right to open up the, uh, the box there and get it back. You has got what they call legal uh, jurisprudence. That's what you got. Oh, I yeah. Well, that puts a different light on the thing. Yeah. But listen, Kingfish, you still got to go with me. Because I don't want to wind up on this thing being no scapegoat. Oh, you ain't going to be no good. No, no. Well, well, I'm working in there on the box. You got to stand outside the phone booth and keep guard. Okay, Andy, look here. You run home, get a bunch of tools. Tell you what, get a, get a, a, get a hammer and then get one of them chisels you get behind there. Yeah. Get a bunch of tools. I'll see you down the drugstore. Okay. Now, if anybody asks us any questions, We'll just tell them we just telephone repairmen, and the phone got a short circuit. Short circuit. Yeah, we'll tell them it come down to lengthen the thing. That's right. Hello, Doc. Got, got time to fix me a Coca Cola? Why, sure, Frank. Sit down. Yeah. Yeah, what are you doing without your police uniform today? That's yeah, my day off. Mm -hmm. Ben, I gotta call police headquarters now and see what's cooking for tomorrow. I'll go back and use your phone. Oh, there's a couple of fellas using the booth right now. Yeah. Uh, well, as soon as I finish the coke, I'll go on back and hurry him up. Uh, how's it coming in the booth, Dan? I'm doing all right. Yeah, that was the stuff, Andy. Tear the phone right off the wall there. Uh, uh, hey, wait a minute, Andy. There's a fellow walking over here from the soda fountain. Uh, close the door and keep working. Main thing is to pry the phone off the wall, you know. Don't worry about this fellow that's coming over. I'll handle him. Do, 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 uh, nice day, ain't it? Yeah. Somebody using the phone in there? Uh, yes, sir, yes, sir. I got a long-winded friend in there that's making a couple of calls. Yes. <laughs> Certainly a noisy dial in there, ain't it? <laughs> You know, uh, that friend of mine and I would be in there a long time. Don't you want to go over to the corner there and sit down and wait for him over there somewhere? No, no, I'll wait here. I was just going to call headquarters. Oh, uh, yeah, so that's a nice place. Uh, that's a good, uh, uh, what is that uh, last thing you say they, uh, uh, call where? Headquarters. Excuse me for protruding, Mr., but uh, you say you're calling headquarters. Uh, you're talking about political headquarters, Democrats or Republicans, them people. Huh? No, no, no. Police, uh, police headquarters. I'm a policeman. Mm-hmm. Uh... <laughs> you see, uh... Kingfish, let me have the big hammer. I can't get this money box open. <laughs> what did you say, stranger? <laughs> Wait a minute. I see what's going on here. You two fellas are breaking into that coin box. Now stand right where you are. Hey, Doc, Doc, call the wagon, quick. Wait a minute, mister. You can't rest me. Kingfish, tell him what you told me. Tell him I got juicy prudence over everything. <laughs> well, Andy's in trouble this time for sure. You know, women's work, the old saying goes, is never done. Week in and week out, clothes and household linen must be washed clean and fresh. And smart women always use Rinso. Now, here's exactly why I say that. New Rinso with Solium does a much better job. 
New Rinseau gets white things not just whiter, but whiter than new. Gay washable colors, too, turn out not just brighter, but brighter than brand new. Rinseau with Solium, the new scientific sunlight ingredient, puts sunshine in your wash, even if that wash is dried indoors. Rinseau wash clothes have a brilliance never known before the Lever Laboratories discovered Solium. Next wash day, I think you'd better try Rinseau, the only soap that contains Solium. And I know you'll stick to Rinseau for good. And now, back to Amos and Andy. This show is a mess, King Fish. I'm throwing us in jail here like this. Yeah, and uh, think of the disgrace being here. Being arrested there in the drugstore and dragged out in the patrol wagon with all them people watching. And the worst thing was when they handcuffed our hands behind our back. Yeah, that's the part I didn't like. When the wagon pulled away, I wasn't able to wave goodbye to none of my friends. <laughs> oh, this is awful, then. And on top of everything else, we never did get that five-cent piece back. Yeah, well, we wouldn't be in here in the first place if you hadn't tried to chip me out of that rare nickel. Oh, never mind that now. The thing is lost now anyway. The main thing is for us to get out of this jail. Yeah, you think they're going to let us out? Yeah, well, sitting here quiet like this ain't going to help nothing. Remember the old saying, Annie? The wheel that squeaks the loudest is the one that's going to slap the grease on, you know? Yeah, that's right. Hey, what you going to do? Watch me here. Hey, jailer! Hey, jailer! Jailer, jailer, come here! Where is you? Say, listen, buddy. What's the idea? You want somebody to punch you in the nose? Do I want somebody to punch me in the nose? Ha, ha, ha! No, sir. <laughs> Well, pipe down there. Uh, yes, sir. I'll pipe right down. Uh, by the way, Noisy, there's a lawyer out here by the name of Stonewall that wants to see you. Would your majesty care to have him ushered in? Oh, yes, sir. Yeah, 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 sir. Get him in here, Hey, you? Mike, send the guy with the patches on his overcoat in. <laughs> this is a nice polite jail, ain't it? Yeah, uh, wait a minute. Here comes Stonewall now. Yeah. Oh, Stonewall, we're sure glad you're here, boy. Hi, boy. <laughs> Unsolved your housing problem. Right? Yeah, well, we're glad you're here, Stonewall. You yeah. got to help us, you know that. Well, don't worry, fella. You know the old saying is there: when Stonewall is here, the clients in the clear. Oh, that's good. <laughs> now look here, you see, Stonewall, uh, they done throw us in jail here, but we is completely innocent. Innocent, huh? Well, now that might slow me down a little. <laughs> I ain't never had a client that was innocent before. Yeah, well, listen, Stonewall, our case is coming up in the night court tonight. Oh, don't worry, I'll go over there with you. You can explain it to me on the way over. And when the case come up, I'll be there fighting for you right on my toe. Oh, Stonewall, you was really a dynamic lawyer. Oh, man, yeah. <laughs> George Stevens and Andrew Brown, I have just read the charges against you two men. Does the lawyer for the defense have anything to say? Oh, uh, yes, sir, Your Honor. Your Honor, I'd like to end a plea of not guilty for these two crooks. <laughs> <laughs> On what grounds, may I ask? These men were caught trying to break open a telephone coin box in the presence of a witness who was also a police officer of this city. Well, yes, sir, Your Honor, but they done learned a lesson. They ain't never gonna break open nothing in front of a cop no more. <laughs> Your Honor, the arresting officer, may I say something at this point? Uh, yes, officer, what is it? Your Honor, when these men were arrested, they made a statement they were not trying to rob the telephone, but trying to recover a rare coin that they previously dropped in the phone by mistake. No, sir, that is right, Your Honor. We were just going to take that one coin out and put a nickel in the place of it. Uh, Your Honor, we brought the telephone into headquarters and checked the coin box for evidence. We did find this 1870-cent, five-cent piece that they spoke about. It seems that these men were telling the truth all the time. I see. Well, in view of these facts, I'm going to dismiss this case. But I'm warning you two, if either one of you ever tamper with a coin box again, it'll go pretty hard with you. Now go on back to jail. Get your clothes, and I'll have you release paper so you can get out tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. He's dismissed. Here, Brown. Here's your nickel. Oh, thank you, officer. Thank you uh, very uh, much. Thank you, yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, well, soon, Wall, thanks for coming down yes. with us. Oh, that's all right, boy. But, you know, there's just one thing about this case. Mm, what's that? If that cop hadn't opened his big mouth, I could have got you off with 90 days. Oh. <laughs> I 
right, you two guys. The judge sent over your release papers. You can go now. You got all your stuff? Oh, uh, yeah, sir, yeah, sir. Uh, Andy, you got the nickel, ain't you? Oh, yeah, I got it right in my pocket, you. Uh, say, uh, uh, Musa, uh, you got a telephone we can use? Yeah, there's a telephone right down there by the front door. Yeah, wait a minute, Kingfish. What do we want with a telephone? Uh, listen, Andy, take this piece of paper here. Now, here is the name and telephone number of the dealer that'll give us $250 for the nickel you got. Now, call him up, see if he's there, and tell him that we are coming over right now because I won't get my half of that money, you know. Well, now, wait a minute, here. Why has I got to give you half of this money? Because I was smart enough to make that kind of deal with you. And if you were stupid enough to let me make that kind of deal and outsmart you, you got to live up to it. Now, there's the telephone. Now, go ahead and call the man. Oh, me. Well, here I go. Uh-oh. Kingfish. What's the matter? I done put the rare nickel in the telephone. <laughs> You done put the rare nickel in the telephone. Well, you got me so nervous, I didn't even think. Why, you stupid bum, how in the world could you do a crazy thing like that? You heard what the judge said about tamping with the phone boxes? And the brown, as long as you live, I never won't have nothing to do with you again. I never want you to speak to me again. Goodbye, you big dummy. What number did you dial, please? El Dorado 06352. I'm sorry, there is no such number. I know they ain't. Will you please return my nickel? <laughs> I think we fooled him that time, Andy. Uh, they, Andy, did you know that Art Gilmore has got some big news tonight? Yeah, what kind of news? Well, the famous Pepsi and Lever Laboratories are bringing out a new product of interest to every woman everywhere. Tell them about it, Miss Gilmore. Ladies, it's exciting news. You can take the guesswork out of home permanent waving. Now the famous Pepsi and Lever Laboratories proudly present Rave, the new improved home permanent that eliminates guesswork. With Rave, and only with Rave, you get the easy-to-use dial-a-wave chart. Your guide to the one right wave for your kind of hair. You'll find a rave wave is gentler, easier, up to twice as fast as old-type home permanence. A rave wave is long-lasting, yet softer, more natural-looking from the very first day. Make your next permanent a personalized rave home permanent. It has been granted the Good Housekeeping Seal and has been accepted for advertising in the journals of the American Medical Association. A complete rave kit is only $2, rave refill kit, one dollar at all drug and cosmetic counters. Both kits contain the exclusive dial-a-wave chart. Rave goes on sale for the first time tomorrow. Good night, folks. See you next Sunday. Be sure and listen to the Amos and Andy show at this same time next Sunday. Stay tuned in now for the adventure.